Now, I really am not a conspiracy theorist. In fact, I generally dislike conspiracy theories. This one, however, I've really bought into. To tell this story, I just need to preface it with one thing, age. For us that smoke Cuban cigars, age is something we obsess over. We try to age our cigars as much as possible and write down box dates of everything we buy. Why is this? Well, like I discussed in my Cuban cigar guide video, Cuba is just one small island that produces cigars for the entire world. They just don't have the agricultural capacity to age their stock. Demand pretty much outweighs supply, so they have to pump out boxes on the go. Unlike brands like Davidoff and Arturo Fuente outside of Cuba who age their cigars for years before retailing them, Cuba just can't do that if they want to get close to meeting the demand. So what is this Añejados thing? Añejados means aged in Spanish. The Añejados program was and is a program through Habanos where they sell highly aged cigars. So far, this sounds perfect, right? It's hard to find aged Cuban cigars, so Habanos have made a line of cigars that fixes just that. However, it's not quite that simple. Habanos had been experimenting with Añejados cigars in previous years, but in this video I'm focusing on this global, well-known Añejados line with this lovely brown second band on. These were released in late 2014, with two cigars being released that year, a Monte Cristo Churchill and a Romeo Julieta Pirámides. Then, in 2015, an Oil de Monterrey Hermosos Número 4 and a Partagas Corona Gorda was released, and the following year, in 2016, an H. Upman Robusto joined the family. They all look like lovely cigars, but if you just stop for a second and think about them, you'll notice something is a little off. None of these cigars exist in their brand's regular production lineup. H. Upman doesn't have a regular production Robusto, and Partagas doesn't have a Corona Gorda. How, then? Did Abanos have these cigars to release in the first place? Like I discussed, Abanos never ever ages their regular production cigars. How have Abanos suddenly just found boxes upon boxes of heavily aged stock? How come the country that can barely meet demand just randomly had tens of thousands of perfectly good cigars just sitting around? And even more strangely, how come they were cigars that didn't exist before? Another factor that also makes it highly suspicious is the fact that whenever they've sold really aged stuff before, it's lines like the Reserva and Gran Reserva lines. These cigars fetch prices of around $30 to $100 a cigar, whereas the Añejados line was priced conservatively at around $15 a stick. It really makes no sense. Some people theorize that these Añejados cigars were cigars that were intended for sale as new regular production additions, but that just didn't quite make the cut, whether for quality or other reasons. Perhaps Abanos were intending to release a regular production Monte Cristo Churchill, and they begun production, but after the quality testing, they just realized that the cigars weren't good enough. Then a few years later, instead of just throwing these failed cigars away, they slap a second band on them, call them aged, and punch up the price, and voila, you can make money out of previously worthless stock. Now, obviously these are just theories, and the fact is, like with almost everything Abanos does, we'll never truly know. All I know is that too many things don't add up with this line, and I've personally tried some before, and I certainly didn't think they were a good cut above the regular production stuff. Another thing to note is that the line did take a break from 2016 to 2019, and when it returned, it was with Romeo Julieta Churchill, a cigar that actually does exist as a regular production cigar. Perhaps this was because they were found out with what they were doing, or because of poor sales. All in all, it's a real Cuban cigar mystery. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of new style of conspiracy theory video. This is just such an exciting and interesting topic that I've thought about for years now, so I wanted to, you know, bring it to light a little bit because we've talked a lot about this with people in the DMs and things of that nature and, you know, it's just very interesting and not a lot of people have thought of it, it seems. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed as always and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.